morning and welcome back to Tarot Tats and Tea. Today I'm coming on to share with you some of the things that have come through the door lately. Yeah, a few orders. The first thing I'm going to show you, which is in keeping with the title Tarot Tats and Tea, is the order that I placed with um with the Irish Apothecary that's based on Shop Street in Westport in County Mayo, um, is the Mullin Tea that arrived. It came packaged with some filters. Uh, um, filters I don't particularly use, but thank you for them anyway. But these are going to actually be, um, be useful in many things, from art projects to being used as filters. <laughs> so thank you for the addition of those. Now, what is Mullin Tea? Mullin Tea has so many different properties. And I'm going to read some of the properties that are listed here on the back of this pack of loose leaf mullein tea. The benefits applied externally, compressive leaves which contain mucilage properties are said to soften tumours, harden swellings and inflammatory conditions of the skin. The leaves and flowers are highly recommended as a cough remedy, especially for dry, hacking coughs, asthma, bronchitis, etc. It is also something given for kidney complaints. Directions for use of this tea. The tea, ah, that's why this, these have been sent. I wasn't straight, I've never strained my mullein tea. I've, I've just put it in a tea ball. It states here, the tea is recommended to be strained through coffee filter paper as the fine hairs can be irritating to the mucous membrane if swallowed. I am absolutely um, fastidious about making sure there's no floaters in my tea. <laughs> when it comes to my herbal teas because as much as I love the taste of my herbal teas I don't like bits floating in any drink you know even if you dip a biscuit into tea or coffee as, as people do that the thoughts of having crumbs floating in my tea almost renders me in a, 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 an absolutely useless mess because it makes me feel quite ill so I haven't had that issue however now that I know that I'm actually going to use that and give it a go in fact I could actually make up the mullein tea loosely, not using my tea ball, and um, strain it through into a more ornamental teapot for use. I think that would be a good idea. But mullein tea has quite an earthy taste. Um, some would say it is, um, you know, uh, what do they say, an acquired taste. Um, I suppose all herbal teas are. It depends on, on, on what you like. I'm not a lover of our milky white teas, except for the tea that my mum makes. That's the only tea that I will drink. Oh, and my sister, actually, and my sister. They make tea very similarly. <laughs> but I don't drink milky white tea as a rule, only um, maybe three or four times a year when I visit home. Um, so... The mullein tea is one that has many benefits when it comes to any bronchial issues. Um, I had a chest infection oh, a few months ago and drank the mullein tea. And whether it's psychosomatic, I don't think it is. I do, I do found that it did ease um, a cough. It did ease that tickle in the throat. And I did feel more able to breathe freely, although it didn't clear the, the actual... The actual um, uh, infection or anything like that it eased the symptoms so that's mullein tea what else have i got here on tarot tats and tea today things range from tea to books to cards to crafts <laughs> okay now if you recall a while back i reviewed two books one was hidden gifts the other was The Gifts That Bind. Now, the third book in that series has very recently been released by Caroline O'Donoghue, and it's Every Gift's a Curse. Now, apparently, these books are written for young teenagers or young adults. I have to say, I am finding them so interesting. It's if you If you like literature that is aimed at that young adult, it sort of gives you a little bit more escapism. It takes you out from the real everyday stresses and strains of, of ordinary life and escaping into the world of fantasy and make-believe. This particular book, the third in the series, Every Gift is a Curse, this is the blurb on the back. She appears in rare readings. Yes, you've guessed it. 
it's all about tarot. And only to young women. The housekeeper has been summoned. Maeve and the coven must find a way to put the vengeful tarot spirit to rest for good. But the key lies deep in the housekeeper's past, where only Maeve can go. With dark powers creeping ever closer, her last hope is for the friends to come together and unite their gifts. But is that what's written in the cards? So this is actually the final book in the New York Times best-selling series. And I have to say, I've really enjoyed them. Um, uh, it's it's um, like finding another treasure like Harry Potter, but on a completely different scale. It's um, It's most enjoyable. I haven't started it yet, but that's, oh my gosh, on my to read list. Now, I have to say I have one, two, three, four, five books over there. I've got three beside my bed and I've got a number on my bookshelf that I haven't actually read yet. I've said, oh, I like that title. I must get that. And I've had gift cards and things which I've spent on books. This one's jumping the queue because I enjoyed those so much. <laughs> Usually I lend books out, but am I going to lend these three out? I don't think so. Pretty much like my Harry Potter. I wouldn't lend them out either. Call me mean. Call me mean. I know. <laughs> The other book I'm going to show you is going back to, um, not sort of going over our Ancestry project, but it's what I'm keeping my Ancestry grimoire in. And it's in the form of this little notebook. Now, it is only small. Um, if I was to take the book that I'm hoping to read, there you go, you can see it's difference in height, similar width. It's handy. You can transport it with you, you know. If um, whilst you're working on this type of project, it's handy to have in your bag and on the go. And if you spot things such as um, your sidewalk oracles, you can make notes of them. I like the little wrap around. I find it all blends in well with the theme of ancestry going back in time and aged. And the pages are all aged too. Um, the, the, what I like is the cover is very, very floppy, right? Um, and as you can see, I've just worked my way through it. It's not like a book of ephemera. Um, I've just stuck in things that we've created along the way. And uh, I'm finding it's beautiful to write in. I have not used my ink and um, my, my glass pens, quill pens, simply because the ink does seep through the page. I am using ballpoint pens for this. And if I'm writing with say my glass nibs I would put it on another sheet of paper and glue it in as I have done here okay so this is the doorway to take me back in time to my ancestors and my ancestral grimoire most recent and working backwards so that's my immediate immediate family tree just to my grandparents and from here this is now stepping back in time and that is what I do that was written with a glass pen and um, with different coloured inks and it's written in um, neon colours for a particular reason which is just just for me <laughs> and so this is handy to if you if you're on the go if you are traveling and there's anything that you want to add that's either for your project or just a side note it's lovely you have the little key that closes in there and that keeps the book closed you will stand the chance of these curling, but you know something? A little bit of brown paper over it and a warm iron will soon flatten it out. But those curls, it gives it a look of use. The other thing that I have going from books to crafts are these watercolour paints. Now, I haven't painted for a while. I do need to get back to do some painting. But I saw these and thought these would come in useful. Um, the kit's lovely. It, it, it comes in a lovely tin. Okay. The paints are the um, Artistro watercolour um, paint set. They're 12 metallic colours and six chameleon colours. Chameleon colours are colours that when you turn them in the light, they actually look different colours. Now I have two test sheets, a white sheet and a black sheet. Um, and the colours will look actually quite different on each of those. You're given a colour chart. I like this plastic colour chart. It's not usual you get um, one of these. It's normally a cardboard one. And that sort of gives you an, an idea of what the colours look like. In the tin, we have our water pen. 
a normal uh, a water brush, a normal paintbrush. We have here a what is that actually? It's a pen of some sort. Just bear with me while I just pull that out. Oh, it's a metallic marker. We have a metallic marker which you can edge your cup, your paint if you want to. You've got your little mixing trays here and a sponge if you need to dab it up or if you want to just dab some excess water off. Now, if you look here at these, these are the six chameleon colours. So I'm going to try and, and see if you can see how they change colours. Not showing you very well on that camera. Um, this one here goes from a green to a gold. This is sort of a red to a bronze. This one here is a pearlized colour, and whereas that is a sort of a pearly green, that's a pearly pink, and that's a green and yellow. I'm going to see if I can just pop some on the sheet for you to have a look at. And these are the metallic colours. Just bear with me one second, I'll be back. So I've just popped some water into the water brush, and uh, we're going to have a little look. So. The first colour that I'm going to look at is the um, the gold colour. So I'm just going to give this a little squeeze to get the water down so we know it's coming through, which it is. Wet the paint. It's hard to see it on the brush. And I'm going to just pop this onto the black sheet first and then I'll do it onto the white sheet and we can see how it compares. So this is the gold colour that I'm putting on here now. I think it is just called simply gold, is it? Yeah, it is. On the top corner there. Okay, we'll see whether it looks as, as vibrant as that. Now this is not the chameleon colour, this is the metallic colour. I'll just do one of each, one chameleon, one metallic, so that you can see the effect. Okay, this is on the black card. <clears throat> wow, isn't that great for a metallic colour? I actually like that. We'll see what effect is like on the white card. Is there a big difference? I suppose there would be in a way. You know, the black would highlight it differently to the white, wouldn't it? Let's have a look here. Now, when you paint it on, it actually doesn't look like there's any colour going onto the card until you hold it up. Now let's see what this is like. Here we go. Now, there you can see the gold layer. It's not as vibrant on the white as it is on the black. Let's just hold the two together. There we have that. Let me just see if I give it a little bit extra. Does it make a difference? You can see the the the, the hint there. That would be good. You know, if you've if you've got other colours in the background and it would make the gold pop, or if you're mixing the gold to another colour, it would give it that glitter. Using it on a black background, you wouldn't need anything else with it because it really does make that gold pop a lot. I'm going to take one of the chameleon colours. I think we'll go for we'll go for this green one down here, which is it's rainforest magic. This is called. Okay. On the white, there we go. And if you tilt it, which I don't know, oh, there you go. It goes sort of a a goldy colour. Okay. Now here we go on the black, it comes out as gold. Isn't that weird? You can see a hint of green, but on the black, it looks gold, completely different. Isn't that quite amazing? I'm actually quite amazed by that. I carry another journal with me, which is over here. This one comes with me when I travel, and in this I have um, a black section, which I have already used. These were metallic markers, uh, if my memory serves me right. Um, 
and you can see the effect that it's had that met metallic markers have had there you know so that's the sort of thing I do when I'm traveling around and that comes with me but uh, this would be great if you're going anywhere and it's small enough again it's a small enough tin to take with you to be able to enjoy painting and doodling on the go and now in the meantime let's move on to the last thing the one that I've kept for last the Celtic Book of the Dead okay now this is an oracle to steer your life journey and it's illustrated by Danuta Mayer. The deck itself and book is created by Caitlin Matthews. Sorry, I, I have just mentioned Caitlin Matthews. I need to stress here, it's not Caitlin, it's Kathleen Matthews, okay, but spelt Caitlin, okay. So, voyage through the, the, sorry, voyage through the Celtic Otherworld to discover your path ahead. This brand new updated edition of this classic oracle features 42 beautifully illustrated cards based upon the ancient Irish text of the voyage of Maeldwin. While the Tibetan and Egyptian Book of the Dead are recognised as well-known guides to the afterlife, few people realise that the Celtic Imrama or voyage stories reveal an indigenous tradition that allows us to journey on our own voyage of self-discovery. The cards in this pack can be used in conjunction with the book in a variety of ways, whether as an oracle to discover the path ahead, a guide to the soul's direction, a meditational tool for personal and environmental healing, and also as a book of the dead for the dying and the soul midwives who attend them. These windows between worlds will steer you through obstacles and challenges to help you map the progress of your plans and navigate your way through the shoals of life. Within the pack, 42 beautifully illustrated oracle cards, a 160 page guidebook introducing the Celtic Imrama tradition, the story of Meldwin, plus card interpretations and methods of reading, and a layout sheet for your Imram voyages. So it opens like a little drawer, and on top we have the book. Okay. There's no blurb on the back because it's on the front of the on, on the back of the box. The um, book is it's this is a, this is a published by Red Feather by the way. So the contents of the book: um, forward taking a pilgrim pilgrimage back to life, introduction the golden path, the book of the dead and the sacred passages. Chapter one: Imrama rowing about the Celtic voyage tradition. Chapter 2, The Voyage of Maldwin. Chapter 3, The Blessed Islands. Chapter 4, Maps of the Soul Charting a Course. Chapter 5, Healing from the Edge of Ocean, Voyage with the Cards. And Chapter 6, Midwiving the Soul, The Art of Dying. I don't think I want to actually read that section just yet. And um, there is a reason behind that, because I'm just not comfortable with that at the moment. Um, There are poems that can be read, you know, if you're with somebody who's who's uh, heading out from their mortal coil. But that I'm keeping to look at it another time. You've got to be in the right headspace for that sort of thing. But this here, um, when it goes through the cards, it's quite interesting. It's almost laid out like a chessboard. Mm -hmm. The Sacred Nine map. So, the Sacred Nine map. Let's have a look here. This is going to take some working out, to be quite honest. Um, I think this book would have to be read before we get on with the cards. So if we would take a a look at the, the card that's the wheel, for instance, we'll come across it in a minute. The wheel is a common symbol in Celtic mythology. It is often used to depict the sun. Ariane Rod, the British lady of the silver wheel, is the mistress of destiny. Mogrue, the Irish druid, used his wheel to spin through the skies as though on a chariot, meaning it's change, a new cycle, destiny fulfilled or changed. Things move on a game after status, you know, when things have been pretty much in the doldrums. Challenge, how can you use what you have learned in the past to good advantage now? 
What recurrent features can you discern in your life? And if you've got recurrent features discerning in your life, then have you actually learnt? If it's something that's hindering you, have you actually learnt from whatever's gone wrong and decide and, and worked out a path, a way round um, anything that's that's um, reoccurring? Because things shouldn't be too reoccurring, really, if we have sort of managed to sort sort of go round a problem. The Dragon Stone is another card. The dragon stone was considered to be a symbol of great strength, possessing invincible qualities. It appears in the Irish story of um, Mongan, the half-human, half-immortal son of Manan Maglir, meaning adamantine strength to overcome all difficulties. Challenge, the ability to succeed in your intent lies in your hands. Act resolutely with the courage of your convictions. So it's all putting it back into you, looking inward, your strengths at your weaknesses and everything else. This is the map or layout for a reading and that is actually in the book and it's one that you would need to be able to follow with the book before you would be able to just say hey ho let's just go ahead and read. I think this is a deck that needs understanding. The cards are like poker sized cards and you've got things like Land of the Giant Ants, Island of Many Birds, Island of the Hound Footed Horse. So they're all little cards that, you know, have Celtic mythology, creatures from Kel Celtic mythology within them. And it's basing the, the, the mythology, the symbolism of these, these creatures and places and bringing them into um, meaning, giving them meaning, giving them something that could, we could resonate. Like you do with any oracle deck or any um, tarot deck, to be honest, if you're reading intuitively. Um, Island of the Hermit. Island of the Hermit, look at that. And he's just how I would imagine a hermit. Island of the Forge. What would you imagine happens on an island of the Forge? Making, creating, using your strengths to, to mould and um, create and build a new you, not just a new item. Sea of Glass. What would we see in a Sea of Glass? Would our, our inner selves be reflected in that glass? Would we see things we like or things we don't like? Is there things that we need to change? Is that sea of glass showing us something else besides the colour and the beauty of the creatures within? You know, Island of the Rainbow Stream. And here we have Rainbow Trout. Look at that. Beautiful. So those are the cards. This is the deck and I think it's going to be another one of those decks that actually brings with it a sense of adventure. So these people are what's arrived through the door. I thought I'd just pop on and share it with you before I nip out and get on with my day. It looks lovely and sunny out there today. I think it has rained overnight. It looks to have all gone which means my trees would have been watered. They're all starting to get little buds on them and it's really nice to see. Um, I'll create a video, I think, on how my garden is um, evolving. Um, you may all recall me starting my greenhouse last year. Well, I'm creating a nice little quiet space in the garden, but that quiet space, it's only small, it's this, I have a shed here and a greenhouse here and it's the space in between. I've run two benches there. I've put strings of light, solar um, lit lights there. Um, <coughs> I, will have a, I have a fire pit to go in the middle, but I have covering that area or when I, well, I hope when they, they grow and they do grow and bear fruit, there's a plum tree, there's a lemon tree, there's um, a pippin apple tree. There's a kumquat tree and a lime quat tree, as, a, along with pots of flowers. So it creates that sort of cosy deal. And you've got the, sh the greenhouse behind you, the shed in front of you, you're sort of boxed in a nice little chatty area. Um, and other trees, I've got a cherry tree and um, a Bramley apple tree. And I've planted another apple tree, which is quite a quirky apple tree. It is not two trees entwined as I initially thought it would be but it's one tree that fruits two different types of apple so once that is blooming blossoming and 
giving fruit, I hope it does, we'll, I'll do a little tour of the garden in the spring when everything's starting to come out. So it's not a big garden, it's just a little stony area that I'm um, creating a garden with pots and furniture. So I can't wait to share that with you. In the meantime, have a good day. I hope this video finds you all fit and well and uh, ready to just take life by the short and curlies and deal with whatever it brings. And remember, you do have the strength within you to deal with whatever life throws at you. Sometimes you just have to sit back, breathe and let our mind and our, our core find the answer. Take care, everyone. Have a lovely day.